So here is my new camera mounting system. It's a RAM mounting system and I stick my GoPro up on top of that. Now I have another uh, 14 inch extension right? That, uh, that I can add to that so it gives you lots of clearance over the snowmobile. And a couple more changes I made was I finally uh, drilled holes and using one inch clamps and a little bit of tape um, I mounted my box on, on four corners basically to the sled. I was trying to reduce the amount of vibration felt up through the camera and uh, even though I have rubber on the bottom of that rubber mounts the box is snug I'm still getting uh, lots of vibration. Uh, this just this just wobbles like like crazy, and and it makes for very very shaky footage. So uh, I'm not exactly sure. Other than going out and getting a new GoPro, like the uh, the one with the hyper smooth um, stabilization, I don't know what else to do to uh, quieten it down. And I've even, here on my hasp, I just got off the sled, and already up to my knees here. But I don't know if you can see it, but even on these uh, little hasps, I end up putting a little bit of tape to help hold it uh, more snug. So there's absolutely no vibration coming from my the door of my box, or the lid of my box, whatever you want to call it. But the old box is holding up good, boy, I gotta say. And, but you can see where I'm to today. I'm out here just looking at some of the most scenic country and uh, I like to come up here on a very regular basis because uh, it's just it's just so beautiful and a little while ago over on the top of that hill way up over there there was two moose but I didn't get the camera out and going uh, quick enough so I don't know if, if I'm on camera or not I think I may be. Some of you guys may be wondering why I haven't posted a video in a in a while, and that's simply because uh, my hip has really been bothering me. And it bothers me a lot, actually. The sciatic started back when I was in the in the military, and uh, you know I have I have a lot of good days. And, some not so good days. Uh, so I haven't really been out doing a lot of videoing other than right directly from, from the skidoo itself. Because, uh, you know, anytime anybody can tell you that's doing videos, anytime you're getting out and you're getting off your sled and you're. Uh, setting up the camera and you gotta go back and get the camera and you're walking through the snow and you're you're bringing your hips right up your thighs right up and stuff your feet whatever uh, it just gets uh, problematic after a while but we're not done here today we're gonna we're gonna do a lot more scouting around and maybe I'll get some more nice scenic shot as long as the uh, sun stays out so I'm gonna get going there now okay so <coughs> After watching the rabbit work this pen 
for the last few nights I've decided to raise every one of my snares just a little because what the rabbit seems to do is come and, and get into an upright sitting position before uh, or at the edge of the pen and if you guys remember on the video he actually started hopping through right there he cut a he chewed a hole and started hopping right through there so guess what we now have Mr. Uh, Snare sitting there waiting for him. So if he tries to go through there tonight, we should get him. This is the last footage I got of the rabbit. In the next clip, you'll see him quickly bolt past on the lower right hand side. Moments later, Mr. Red Fox comes along. And that was the last I've seen of the rabbit. Here's my snare, and if you notice, the eye of the snare is cut. This is uh, the last night that we can catch rabbits, and I don't want to catch this rabbit, every one of my snares, I cut the eye on this pin. I, I, I don't want to catch this rabbit because he's given me such a such an education on on uh, setting rabbit snares so I want to honor him and uh, having him go through the snare hopefully and uh, and and not get caught so uh, we'll see how this pans out for us tonight okay so the day I went in the morning that I went in and snipped the eyes of my snares the footage that I got in the night before on the trail cam showed the, the rabbit running past the camera and the fox uh, following up shortly behind just moments later. And that was the last time that the rabbit was in that area. I've been going back for a week now and there has been no sign of the rabbit. So I think the fox had gotten, gotten the rabbit. Here's my camera uh, and here's the mounting system that I use. I no longer use straps. Uh, I got a... Uh, a 3 8 inch eye bolt, a quarter inch eye bolt, and uh, I guess maybe a quarter inch, maybe a bit bigger than a quarter inch, yeah, bigger than a quarter inch, uh, a, a lag bolt. And uh, you also got to get your wing nuts to, ma uh, to, to marry up with your 3 8 and 1 quarter inch. Uh, Eye bolts and then a washer you only need uh, two washers I've seen this done on YouTube with three washers they had a washer right here but you don't need a washer on this face because the eye bolt itself uh, this 3 8 eye bolt will actually uh, uh, snug itself nicely into your lag bolt right your eye lag bolt so the only washers you need are on either side of your uh, uh, quarter inch mounting, camera mounting uh, lag bulb. And it's a really nice system because oh, uh, you're able to adjust the angle, uh, adjust the tilt, and you can screw that anywhere. You can screw that into uh, um, a branch, or a large limb, even maybe even a small limb, you know, uh, the end of a limb, a broken limb, uh, smaller trees, like, so this system actually just, it, it mounts anywhere, and you don't have that big strap, so if I got a, cam a camera mounted on this side of the tree, and someone walks, there's a trail going behind it, nobody will ever know that camera is there, nobody will ever know the camera is there. It's, uh, I, I love, I love this setup. So we're going to have a rabbit stew tonight. It's the 12th of March of my birthday, so that's my birthday dinner. So I've decided to try and lose a little bit of weight. My goal is 55 pounds by the time I turn 55 and I'm 
52 now. So I'm looking to weigh in at 180 pounds. I have both pieces of my new mounting system attached to the box. And you can see how wobbly it is. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to get that good over shoulder view that I had earlier this year with the monopod. Uh, unfortunately the monopod broke and it left me searching for a new type of mounting system. Uh, this one here is just not going to cut it. But when I take away one of the 14 inch extensions, it stabilizes itself out pretty good. Now I'm down to one lint with the ram mounting system and I decided to take a little trip down the brook uh, just to see what was down there for sign, see how the brook changes. It's always nice to go down from year to year and, and scout it all out to see if the brook changed any during the spring floods. Here's where they dredged out to help uh, prevent flooding. And now I'm up on the side of the first hill. Uh, it's, a, it's an area I like to go uh, probably two or three times a week. I just come up here if the weather is nice and I glass over the, the far hill. It's uh, just a nice place to get out close to home and see some, some beautiful country and look for animals. And I, and I do see quite a bit of moose up in this area. Looking down towards the Bay St. George and Indian Head, And now I'm um, going again. March month here is a little bit tougher on the tundra because the snow uh, gets a lot more packed during the day and I can't carve into the hill like I could uh, when, when it was soft powdery snow. Soft powdery snow, tundra loves it. Uh, when it gets uh, crusty and, and hot during the day and cold at night and, and the snow gets a real good firm base, uh, and there's a lot of side hill here uh, I gotta shift my weight a fair amount this is the time of year where going side hill with the tundra uh, can get problematic unlike a, a wider stance machine but do I still prefer the tundra? you bet I do uh, I just gotta be a little bit more uh, cautious as to where I take it a month ago I could take it all over this cut over and keep my skidoo nice and flat Up at the cabin site and three moose are on the go. Always nice to see moose. In at the cabin site with Elliot. Uh, what do you think buddy? That was a gorgeous spot. Any, any uh, think it's a good spot for moose? I would say yeah. Why would you say that now? <laughs> Those three moose down there. Oh, it could be right.
heading back up to uh, the little area I like to go and, and sit and, and glass, glass for animals. This is one of the spots in here that I like to stop and, and, and spend some time and, and glassing the, uh, the open ridges over there on the other side of uh, the Warren Brook Valley and looking up towards Jeanette Mountain or Crash Hill and looking to see if I can see any moose or any other critters and I'm always looking for critters here's a fox and every time you move just a little bit the whole view changes and so I always do a lot of time just moving a little stopping and glassing and I can spend easily uh, an hour to an hour and a half over here uh, every day or every time that I come over not every day but every time that I come over just looking for moose and and wildlife and stuff and checking out all the tracks but you can see uh, that uh, that ram mounting system I know a lot of people use it for kayaks and kayak fishing and I think it's absolutely it will be absolutely amazing for that but for on the back of the skidoo it just does not seem to be working if I had a better GoPro camera it may work using uh, you know that hyper smooth or whatever stabilization that they have now I'm up on top of the Grani it's, uh, it's another spot that I like to come and sit and, and overlook the country uh, I can see uh, a lot of uh, area from here down in front of the Skidoo you're looking at the Bay St. George uh, the mountain off to my right across the valley that's Little Pond Mountain. It drifted in good here this winter. Lots of snow. And not a lot of people coming up through the ground this year for whatever reason. Uh, so I had to break the trail up and here I am now uh, heading home. Some years I spend an awful lot of time up here and, and I like to come up here and I like to walk up here in the fall. It's uh, five kilometers all uphill from the time I leave uh, my back door. Uh, so it's a really nice uh, workout in the fall. Five kilometers up to where I like to turn around and then five kilometers home. So a nice 10k walk uh, and a lot of it uphill. But, you know, uh, you're always rewarded. You're always going to see a lot of wildlife, uh, whether it be moose, uh, partridge, uh, spruce grouse, ruffle grouse. Um, I haven't seen a coyote up here. I've seen lots of coyote tracks. I haven't seen a fox up here, and I've seen lots of fox tracks. But you do get to see uh, some rabbits and stuff like that. Let me know what you think if, uh, if that over shoulder is just too shaky. It produces nice pictures like you've seen at the beginning of the video. But uh, as for actual video clips, I think I, I really got to keep them short. That tree right there that I'm pointing to that slimmed out a little bit up there. I had a tree stand up there about three years ago for moose. Seen a, a number of moose from that tree stand. Uh, there was a really big bull in here uh, for a few years. And uh, I was kind of after that guy, but uh, I never, I never, I didn't get him. I ended up getting a, a little eight point bull, a good, a good meat bull. And I prefer meat bulls, uh, you know, you can't eat horns, like Dad always used to say. And uh, he never used to let us shoot the, the, the meat bulls. But here I'm just picking my way through the country, scouting around, looking for all sorts of animal sign, 
Uh, I like to check out these little bogs and stuff because a lot of time you will see uh, partridge on them. And uh, just as I cut in through here, you see rabbit tracks right there. Also, a good little bog to see moose on in the in the fall and call moose up too. I've done that in here before. Here comes those rabbit tracks again, uh, running off to the to the left there. But uh, you know, I just like coming in here, scouting around, and, and right now, well, what's caught my eye is all these. Um, stumps sticking up all these dead stumps so I came over here to have a, a little look and half thinking about coming up here with my uh, sleigh and, and chainsaw and getting a load of uh, dry dead standing and uh, all the tops of the stumps that I could uh, manage to cut and put into my sleigh it would make good kindling and good firewood and whether it be for my daughter or for the fire pit, uh, it all burns. And uh, it's nice to get to cut down some of these high stumps. You can tell it was a, a winter cut in here. Somebody had cut in here years and years ago. But now, uh, time to time to head on home again. Another set of rabbit tracks there. Could be from the same rabbit. You see them going again right here. I like the camera angle. Uh, the shorter clips don't seem to bother me as much. Yeah, they're all shaky. But it is it's the best I can do right now other than putting on a chest mount and the, and the head mount that I used to do when I first started. Um, I don't have the proper mount to mount it to my front bumper to face it back towards me. But I can mount it directly on my uh, front bumper and face it forward. I don't have the ram attachment for there. Uh, it seems like there's a few rabbits running around up here to year. Not a not an overabundance, but there's a few, and it is March now, and they are in the breeding season. So uh, one rabbit chasing another rabbit can make for a lot of tracks in in short order. And as you can see, and I don't know if the camera's doing a really good job picking it up, but this is all is all downhill grade. It, it would be nice to actually cross country ski down this. Well, sections of this. Some parts of, of this trail uh, gets quite steep, and uh, I don't think I'd like to ski down it now, you know? I think he'd go way too fast for my uh, cross country skiing abilities. But uh, it would be a, a lovely trip. Coming up wouldn't be fun, going back down would be, would, uh, be very quick and, and a lot more fun and a lot less work. Now this is the hill that I keep talking about that I can never uh, get a really good angle or capture of it either if the camera's on me or on my sled it really doesn't do justice to how uh, steep this, this hill is. So one of these days I'm going to come up and level up the camera off to the side uh, give you a, a side hill shot of uh, the how steep the, the hill is. And I'm about two kilometers now from the house. There's this little washout right about here, and that little uh, washout is two kilometers from the house. So sometimes when I want to go for just a, a quick walk, I'll go up and, and back from there. Now I'm picking my way through this uh, old cutover. Nice. I like it, uh, getting out there when the snow is good like this, and and weaving around, picking my way through, getting getting off the main drag, so to speak, and just slowly working your way 
uh, through the trees, through the cutovers, through the bogs, bog leads, a few dry stumps here. Uh, I could probably uh, cut a cut a little bit of them to top up the sleigh on my way home. Just go along and, and do a lot of uh, stump cutting and, and dead standing. Right down at the bottom of this hill, just into the right, I'm going to the left, but into the right, there's a really nice waterfall in there, 17 feet high. Earlier this year, I was seeing uh, a fair amount of moose back in here, but uh, I think uh, the skidoos are coming back and forth this lower section of the trail on, on a regular basis, uh, probably uh, a couple times a day. And the moose seem to have uh, vacated this, this area. Not far from home now. I like these old boggy like trails. Reminds me of going uh, down uh, to my, my grandfather's on, on Skidoo. Now I'm in behind the house. That that old tree is going to have to come down, dead standing. Uh, it uh, got wind, wind blown, and there's a few more here. Get rid of some of these branches here, right quick. But when I stop, uh, it's it's a really nice uh, camera angle. As soon as I start to, to, to move the sled at all, Mr. Fox right here in my backyard. And as soon as you get moving just uh, just a little bit, uh, you uh, the shakiness, shakiness comes right back into the camera. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And what I'm going to do is uh, give you a little teaser of what's coming in my next video. I was out and I found some very promising uh, cat tracks. I believe they are cougar, just from the size, the the depth that it sunk in the snow, and the uh, stance, and and the the width of the, of all the measurements. I believe uh, it, it to be cougar and not lynx. So I'll uh, just give you a little quick uh, teaser clip as what's to come in my next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you real soon. Okay, so here, here's the, here's the tracks again. You can see the, the toes, uh, probably with a little bit more clarity and, and definition. And uh, you're seeing a big toe pad and a big, a big heel pad. I know people will say that, you know, it could be a, um, a lynx and uh, the sun had some effect on, on the size of the track and, and whatnot. But what I'm gonna say to that is that the, the toe pad and, and the heel pad, uh, that would have been distorted as well. And uh, the toe pads weren't. Here's my track and how far I sank down. This is the cat's track and how far it sank down. It's stride. It's stride from uh, left foot to left foot is uh, 35, 35 inches. Okay. That is that is a big cat. And the and the track is five to five and a quarter inches. And I hope the camera's picking this up. I just wanna show you the width from outside of one, one paw to the outside of the opposite paw. We're looking at the better part of 12 inches. Now this, I believe, to be lynx tracks. And it's stride from uh, front, uh, I get front right to uh, front right is, I hope you can see that, 
right there. If you can't, I'll tell you, it's uh, 27 and a quarter inches. Okay, 27 and a quarter inches. And the width of the track, right on par with Lynx tracks, is uh, about eight inches. Okay, eight inches as compared to 11 and three quarters uh, of, the, of the cat that I seen yesterday, tracks I seen yesterday. All right, notice the toes, toe definition, very small. You see toe pads there, but they're very small. Heel pad uh, appears to be very small because uh, a lynx has a lot more fur between its, its pads and his toes. And that's for buoyancy to help him keep, keep up on top of the snow. Width of the track, four inches. Four inches wide. Eight inch from outside to outside. 27 inch and 27 and a quarter or whatever it was, uh, stride. 